Hey, free to play gang. Okay, so a lot of you guys want to see my Chloe and I, I must say that my Chloe is pretty decently built but she's far from the best. So I've seen a lot of Chloe's that are built a lot better than mine. To add, I think my Chloe is not even properly built so I'll go through that in just a bit. Anyway, you guys already know the drill. If you find that this video is helpful for you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Subscribing is free and you can always change your mind. Now let's start with her skills. So here's her first skill, attacks the target two times, each hit dealing damage equal to 70% of attack with a 50% chance to steal one buff. So you can steal up to two buffs on her first skill, which can be pretty useful in certain content. And now moving on to her second skill. Launches 4 strikes at random enemies, each strike dealing damage equal to 75% of attack, and extends all buffs carried on herself by 1 turn. Now if the target isn't buffed, then you'd inflict buff blocker for 2 turns. So in PvP, especially in an early game where you meet a lot of Lin Cell, this is going to be so important. If you take the first turn and you land a buff blocker on Lin Cell, that's pretty much game over for them. The Lin Cell is not going to be able to recover from this. But of course, I think most people will run with her third skill first. So let's take a look at her third skill. This is what she's known for fashion sense. Launches five strikes on random enemies, each dealing damage equal to 90% of attack and stealing two buffs from the target. Now each buff on Chloe further increases the damage dealt by 10%. So ideally, the way you want to use this is to target the enemies with buffs and hopefully it bounces off onto the correct targets. However, this is strictly RNG. So for PvP, I will highly recommend that you still aim for their DPS first. At least you still have another chance of hitting the DPS again. So she's generally a very strong counter against enemies with adamantine relics. So the thing about adamantine relics is that if you have multiple sets of it, it's only going to show up as one buff, even though the effects actually stack. However, for Chloe, not only does she steal the shield amount, she also steals the shield buff. So she can potentially have up to 5 stacks of shield. But of course, I'm focusing a little bit too much on PvP here, and I feel like she kind of excels a little bit more in like other kinds of content rather than PvP, especially towards the end game. And of course, I will show you in just a bit. So over here, she has an accuracy lead of 30%, which is kind of weird and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I've actually seen her miss her stealing before. The way it feels like to me is that she has a 100% chance of stealing buffs. But I cannot confirm this fact, however, I do use the accuracy lead from time to time, especially when I want my Ritual Miracle runs to be a little bit more regular. But generally speaking, I don't think this is so important. But let's take a look at the relics that I'm running her with, and you'll quickly realize why I say that I built her wrongly. Now, the issue right here is that I'm using War Machine on her. I feel like she works a lot better with Hades. But of course, the Avatara makes a lot of sense. I think the Avatara is really good here. Because generally, when an attacker attacks you, they will carry some buffs with them. And because her damage is so high, so let's say if you outlive one of their DPS attacks, you could very easily one-shot them. So I think for starters, War Machine is definitely the way to go. And when you are able to beat APAP 10 a little bit more regularly, then definitely move from War Machine to Hades. Now for some reason, I've done a lot and a lot of APAP runs, but I have not even had a single Hades set. Or rather, I haven't had a proper Hades set unlike my War Machine sets. So for example, my Dona is not even comparatively that strong. Anyway, let's take a look at her ascensions. And this is the reason why I feel like she's so good. She has a 15% crit rate from her ascensions. So she only needs another 75% crit rate, which is quite easy to obtain. Whereas for most other aspers, even DPS aspers, some of them do not even have a crit rate ascension. So she is really easy to build. Now I think I want to get PvP out of the way because I've talked about it first. And I want to show you why I stayed away from Chloe for the end game. Now, as you can see, the enemy has easily outsped us. And this tends to happen a lot. So it's either you play against their speed or you try to play around it, which is what I went for. So I stopped chasing speed altogether. But anyway, assuming that you get your synergy right and your speed is faster than the other side, then obviously Chloe is going to be very effective. So after their Lin Xiao moves, let's take a look at what my side can do as a counter attack. So Lin Xiao goes first, lands an AoE attack, and here's where Chloe comes in, and she does a lot of damage. So I feel like she's only more usable in like the early to mid game, where your opponents are generally very squishy, and she can easily clean the field with her third skill. However, let's take a look at what happens if you're up against a tanky team in like let's say the end game. And this is why I say the speed meta kind of falls short in this game. In fact, I don't really think speed is all that important anymore, although I should correct myself that uh, being tanky Tanky and being fast is, is really important, but generally taking turn 1 is not really a big deal in this light, or at least if you're running something tanky. Now another reason why Chloe falls short for the end game is because you see a lot of Dona users, and Dona will completely stop her. So not only is Dona's typing a little bit more advantageous, he's also extremely tanky and all of your attacks are not gonna do anything to him. And usually Dona is their main threat, unless of course they are using Renzi, but that's a different story. But as you can see over here, we are completely not doing anything, right? So even if you land defense breaks and all that, they are just gonna cleanse it with their Clara, or maybe their Sally, or even their Hengue, because they are easily going to outlive us. So that's pretty much it, we can't perform after this, so I can't cover her for PvP. Now with that said, I do feel like she's very useful for Ritual Miracles and Sonic Miracles, so let's check it out. 
So the reason why I say she's so good for Ritual Miracles is because, okay, so this is for both Kronos and Apep, okay? Or like someone said, a Pep. So the reason why I feel like she's so good is, as you can see over here, she is doing a fantastic job in clearing out the first two waves. So generally speaking, if you cannot reduce the timer on your boss stage, at least try to reduce the timer on your first two waves because these two are going to be so easy to handle. And what you can see over here is I'm just sweeping every single stage very consistently. And as you can see, this is not a repeat, right? As you can see at the bottom, this is currently 3 out of 10. And I have recorded all the way to like 10 out of 10. So in my mind right now in the end game, this is where I feel like Chloe excels the most. Obviously, she also excels in Sonic Miracles, which I will get to in just a bit. But the idea is that she is one of the very few Espers who has a lot of AoE attacks. And much unlike Mona, the reason why she is so good and the reason why she is even better than Mona, well, obviously her typing is one thing, but the main thing is her randomness. So the thing is, her randomness is also controlled in a sense that if the enemy is killed, you would be able to randomly select whatever that is left. So this is exactly the same as my Louis. So the reason why I'm using both Chloe and Louis together is they both hit random randomly, so they will focus their attacks on whoever's left standing. So this combo is actually really good in shortening your run times, and currently I can even do 44 seconds on my Apep uh, runs. Okay, this is kind of like going on a tangent a bit, but I also use Lui for my Chronos 10 runs right now. There are several reasons, okay? So number one, yes, he clears the waves very fast for me, and number two, he has a searing debuff on his first skill. But in my opinion, this is where Chloe stands out for Ritual Miracles. And in terms of facing the boss herself, I don't think she really stands out that well. Or what I mean to say is for both Kronos and Apep, her randomness may work for you, but most of the time it's not gonna work in your favor. So she's very lacking in terms of the boss fight. But of course, if everything works out well for you, this is how you achieve very fast runs. So for example, if you see different teams with like Chloe in it with a very fast timing, that's because like Chloe actually had perfect RNG. But in terms of regularity, nah, I don't really think so. Anyway, let's move on to Sonic Miracles. I think we are pretty much done over here. And let's see how powerful she can be, especially for the Shimmera. Now, the reason why she's so good for the Shimmera fight is because the boss uses a shield. And she is basically invincible as long as she keeps stealing the shield buffs. So for this case, I think she can definitely solo this without Suhua as long as she is on a Hades set. So this is why I say that she on Hades is very important. So for like stuff like Shimmera boss or maybe even PvP or like early game and mid game PvP, Hades is going to be such a game changer for you. Anyway, let's take a look at how Chloe fares over here. So I want you to pay attention to her HP and just see how often her HP actually drops at all. So naturally, okay, the boss is going to attack first, but that's going to give the boss a shield, right? And you can see the boss is really thick on the shield right now. However, we're not going to be able to steal the shield right now because she's going to use her second skill. But you see that the moment she normal attacks, that's it. So here she goes with a normal attack and bam. Okay, so now she's fully kitted up with a shield. And that's basically going to add on to her damage of her third skill, right? Because the more buffs that she has, the more painful her third skill will be but she's an excellent choice in soloing the Shimmera boss. And she's also really good for the other Sonic Miracle bosses as well, because don't forget, they stand alone and her third and second skill is going to do a lot of damage. So with that said, this is the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more dislike content. Now this has been Daddy Free to Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.